They showed them the money, all right. In 2011, the Mets had still owed Bonilla $5.9 million. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 most insane sports contracts. You know, he's been vilified over the years after signing a 15 million or 15 year, $67.5 million contract, and he hasn't really lived up to it. For this list, we're looking at ridiculously bloated contracts in the sports industry that involved huge amounts of money, but then failed to pay off. No matter what happens, the Yankees still owe Rodriguez $61 million on his contract that runs through 2017. We're putting a particular emphasis on times when the team really should have seen the failure coming beforehand. The Miami Marlins reeling in Giancarlo Stanton with a jaw-dropping deal worth more than $300 million. Humongous soccer transfers won't be on this list, however, as we will strictly be looking at contracts. I want to come here, whether it be for a penny or, or wherever it was, I want to come here and, and do my best for the club and uh, show what I can do on the football pitch. Number 10, Alexi Yashin, New York Islanders. Although he displayed some talent on the ice while he was with Ottawa in the 90s and early noughties, Alexi Yashin's off-ice antics made him one of the most hated players in the league. Yashin? Bocek went at Yashin. Oh man, this is really... Oh gosh. ...degenerated into just a brawl. In fact, he was frequently booed both away and at home. It was no shock when the Senators shipped him off to Long Island in 2001. The Islanders gave up two players and the second overall draft pick to get him and quickly signed him to a 10-year, $85 million plus contract. He's been working hard for, to get this kind of contracts, and uh, it's not, uh, uh, you know, in North America, it's nobody pays just for because they like you so much. <laughs> Yashin's talent quickly evaporated, and the Islanders were stuck with an underperforming and despised player whose enormous contract left them no cap room. And away they went. And you can see the jersey of Yashin was not tied down, Sam, and Klocek just started throwing punches. Number nine. Kimbo Slice, UFC. The third one's the charm! Kimbo Slice wins the main event! With a 4-2 MMA record, Kimbo Slice's signing by Bellator MMA in January 2015 initially seemed perfectly reasonable. It's it. It's all it's it. over. However, Slice's last fight was actually a loss, which came way back in 2010, making the boxer and mixed martial artist a 41-year-old fighter who hadn't fought in five years. While he headlined Bellator 138 and won the June 2015 match, his victory was over Ken Shamrock, who was even further past his prime and deemed an unworthy opponent by many at an astounding 51 years old. Unless Slice plans to exclusively fight athletes that are middle-aged or older, his MMA future could be bleak. Slice quickly across. Number eight, A.J. Burnett, New York Yankees. He didn't have a good release point on this fastball. He missed Mike Redman, but he got Billy the Marlins truck. Without a salary cap in baseball, there's often a tendency to sign up anyone hot to a huge contract without thinking of the long-term consequences. And we thank you guys um, for bringing us into your family because we're all family now. That's precisely what happened when the New York Yankees penned a five-year, $82.5 million contract for the former Toronto Blue Jays player, A.J. Burnett. In New York, Burnett struggled mightily, rarely posting a winning record during the season and failing to close out the 2009 World Series. And that'll be it for A.J. Burnett. Which was eventually done a game later by teammate Andy Pettit. Eventually, the Yankees traded Burnett to Pittsburgh, with New York still paying 20 of the $33 million left on his contract. Burnett with a drive to left. Pritchett taking a look, and that one's gone! Number 7, David Beckham, Los Angeles Galaxy. No, I think Beckham respects that. The LA Galaxy made international news when they signed perhaps the most famous football player in the English-speaking world in 2007 for a hefty sum. However, fame doesn't always transfer to talent, as Beckham arrived hurt and long past his prime. Crowds booed Beckham as the players left the field for halftime. His time in LA was marred by frequent injuries and he drew the ire of fans who referred to Beckham as a fraud. Although the Galaxy captured multiple championships during his tenure, they were owed much more to players like Landon Donovan and Robbie Keane, while Beckham's biggest contribution was likely jersey sales. I might not be playing here anymore, but my commitment stays the same to grow in this, this team, to grow in this league, and to grow in this sport. Number six, Gilbert Arenas, Washington Wizards. Did you happen to catch uh, the contract list that Yahoo put out? 
few weeks ago about worst contracts of all time? Uh uh. I'm probably up there. It's hard to pinpoint what exactly the biggest regret for the Washington Wizards was after signing this overrated player to a six year, $111 million contract in 2008. Gilbert Arenas on the floor. It could have been the many injuries he suffered or his general lack of effort that led to his downfall. However, most people would agree that it was his decision to bring unloaded guns into the locker room which got him charged with a felony and saw him suspended for a majority of the season. I have to deal with, you know, the. the Police, investigation, DAs, that's that's what I have to deal with. Have you spoken to them yet? No, not yet. I'll deal with that on Monday. In 2010, Arenas was traded to the Orlando Magic, where he was quickly waived, came off the bench for the Memphis Grizzlies, and was last signed to the Shanghai Sharks in 2012. Number 5. Mike Hampton, Colorado Rockies. The Astros have won the Central Division title. At the beginning of his career, Mike Hampton actually showed some promise, but not so much as to deserve an eight-year, $121 million contract. And in the year 2000, this was the biggest contract in sports history. Once getting to Colorado, his production quickly fell off a cliff. In his two seasons there, he had an ERA of 5.75, and the Rockies sent him to the Florida Marlins after which he was quickly traded to Atlanta. His time with the Braves was largely spent off the field as he had back-to-back -back Tommy John surgeries and missed two full seasons. Number four, Bobby Bonilla, New York Mets. But that guy negotiated the best contract of all time. I wish my agent was Bobby Bonilla's. In the early 90s, Bobby Bonilla was the highest paid player in baseball thanks to a five-year, $29 million contract. Hits it well. Is it far enough? It is gone, a home run. But that wasn't the insane part. The crazy part came when the New York Mets wanted to part ways with him, but still owed him $5.9 million. Instead of paying him out, the Mets negotiated a new deal, where he would instead be paid roughly $1 million a year, plus interest, for 25 years. It's a grand slam! The deferred payments began in 2011, meaning Bonilla is still being paid more than a few star Mets pitchers, and will be until 2035 when the buyout will have cost them close to $30 million. That will keep Bonilla on the Mets payroll until the ripe old age of 72. Today, he makes more than pitching studs Matt Harvey and Jacob deGrom combined. Number three. Ilya Kovalchuk, New Jersey Devils. Russian NHL star Ilya Kovalchuk has ended his long association with Atlanta and signed up with the New Jersey Devils. The New Jersey Devils, who had traded to acquire Ilya Kovalchuk, were keen to keep their new star when he became an unrestricted free agent. Here's Kovalchuk, he shoots and scores! They were so eager, in fact, that they penned a 17-year, $102 million contract, which not only broke the record for the longest contract in NHL history, but it circumvented the league's salary cap rules. As a result, the Devils were fined $3 million and lost draft picks, with the contract reduced two years and $2 million. Ilya Kovalchuk announced his retirement from the NHL. After a few less than productive years, Kovalchuk left the NHL for good, heading back to play in his native Russia. Number two. Alex Rodriguez, New York Yankees. Pitch from Perkins, hit high in the air, deep center field, back goes Hicks, this one is gone! The Yankees have a long, rich history of throwing barrels of money at players, but a 10-year, $275 million contract for A-Rod was terrible even by their standards. Rodriguez was already in his 30s when he penned this contract, meaning he would be on the Yankees' books until his early 40s. It's been a common theme for Alex Rodriguez here at Fenway Park and is sure to continue in all visiting ballparks the rest of the season as he hears a whole lot of booing. While signing any aging star this long is insane, getting one with a history of steroid suspicion is what lands him in this high spot. In an interview with the DEA, A-Rod admitted he did in fact take performance-enhancing drugs. He told the truth in exchange for immunity. To the surprise of very few, A-Rod was eventually busted for using performance-enhancing drugs and was suspended an entire season. He could have been the Michael Jordan of baseball. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You know, I have zero confidence in myself right now. If you're probably gonna throw the ball instead of puck, and I'm gonna stop it. I always felt like whether I was making that amount of money or less amount, I still had to perform and produce. It was the first time I felt uh, nerve, nervous, you know, nerves. It, it's, it's exciting. 
It's fun. I have a lot of great people that are supporting me. Wade Redden. Yeah, and this was big, big money. And, you know, Wade Redden was, I mean, he's been a great pro. He really, he's been a terrific pro. He had a long run with the Ottawa Senators. Number one, Rick DiPietro, New York Islanders. So this morning, with much anticipation, hope, and excitement, the New York Islanders are picking Rick DiPietro, a goaltender from Boston University, as a number one pick. Not satisfied with the money they had wasted on Yashin, in 2006, the Islanders signed their goalie to a contract for 15 years, something they had tried to do a year earlier, but were blocked by the NHL for obvious reasons. But he gotta, he's going to hold him down and not let him up. Rick DiPietro was hardly a household name and struggled with injuries both before and after the $67.5 million signing. Oh, the draw, they score! He had only one All-Star appearance, never won a playoff game, and was sent down to the minor league, and finally had his contract bought out with an enormous eight years still remaining. I think uh, no one has to worry about me jumping off any bridges anytime soon. Do you agree with our list? If I put in 50%, I'm going to get 50% back. Which players do you think had insane contracts? Unfortunately, he just ran into that microfracture surgery and he could never get back. For more astounding top 10s published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. To do the same. Damon hits it in the air to right field. Sheffield back in the corner. At the wall, a grand slam.